again going to try and take the long view and give you five reasons why I think the clean tech revolution will in fact be as big or bigger than the internet. And I tried to uh, put them all under headlines with the letter S, and I came up with four S's. I couldn't come up with a fifth. <laughs> you know, 80% isn't bad. It won't get you into Harvard, but I guess it gets you into the Harvard Club. <laughs> so the, uh, the S's are science, scale, stimulus, security, and the last one is generational change. I was going to try generation S, sustainability, but, you know, I think Tom, we'll leave the, uh, the invention of new words and generations to people like Tom Friedman. Um, so the number one reason is climate change science. Let me read you a, a quote from an interview that I did last week. The quote is, if you believe the science, it's simply not an option to say times are tough and we don't want to do anything. Now that could have been Al Gore, it could have been Fred Krupp from Environmental Defense, but in fact it was a Deutsche Bank investment analyst named Mark Fulton who last week put out a 165-page report. His fundamental point, and I think it's correct, is that the science is so compelling, or at least one of his points, is that once you understand it, it's very hard to turn your back. And the debate on the science is fundamentally over. So number two is scale. These are really big industries we need to change. The energy industry, the utility, power sector, and the auto industry, and that creates big opportunities as well as big hills to climb. And again, from the Deutsche Bank report, in the energy sector alone, the IEA estimates that about $45 trillion will be needed to develop and deploy new clean technologies between now and 2050. Number three is stimulus. This is a government policy, politics driven industry, energy and environment. And I believe that the way in which it's going to be sold to the public, and it's not a sales job, it's actually an accurate <laughs> argument, is that this is the growth sector for America, that this is part of what we have to do to become more competitive. You heard both candidates have talked some in the election about green jobs. I mean, a simplistic way to put it would be to say, you know, we had our internet bubble and that went away. We had our housing bubble and that went away. What's the next bubble? Well, why not a green bubble? Number four is security. Um, by that, I mean national security and economic security. Here, here I do want to quote from Al Gore, who put it very simply. We're borrowing money from China to buy oil from the Persian Gulf to burn it in ways that destroy the planet. And Tom Friedman makes this argument beautifully in his hot, flat, and crowded book, which again, I would recommend to, to anyone who has not read it. And there is a whole constituency out there, again, this should affect the political climate of, you know, James Schlesinger, the former Energy and Defense Secretary, and George Schultz, who's now at the Hoover Institution, uh, Jim Woolsey, the former head of the CIA has solar panels on the roof of his farm in Maryland and he's got a plug-in hybrid and these folks are concerned about this for fundamental national security reasons. I mean I've heard them say you know we're financing both sides of the war on terror, our own side and the other side as well. So an important political constituency that's not going to let go of the issue. We're okay. Finally there is this generational change and, and this is uh, not to be underestimated. When I, when I generally talk about sustainability in corporate America, I cite a number of forces that are, that are driving this. When I talk to CEOs and ask them why they are interested in, what's the business case for the moves they're making around the whole range of issues on sustainability and the environment, the number one reason I always get, or almost always get, is because it's what our people uh, want us to do. And this generation of young people in their 20s and 30s and even younger are fundamentally different, I think, both from the baby boomers and from the World War II generation that, that preceded us. Uh, they want to go to work and they want to not only make a living, but they want to make a difference. 
companies are out there competing for these folks. I think they're going to become the first wave of green consumers because we haven't really seen green consumers yet. I'm fairly confident that things are changing. I think there will be a consumer wave. I think there's going to be a political wave. I think business, big companies anyway, are absolutely determined to drive this. Uh, and I think the real question is not, is this going to be bigger than the internet or not, but it's, are we changing at a pace that is commensurate or equal to the scale of the problems we're facing? And if not, how do we speed up the pace of change and how do we scale up the changes that we're seeing? So that's actually, I'm going to bring the real experts up.